equations with exponents, algebra 2, trigonometry, regions. So we're looking at a problem that looks like what we have here on number one. Um, and this is uh, towards the middle of our exponent chapter here. We see x to the 3 over 2 equals 8. And so we're solving for x, but it has a, uh, a complex exponent. It has a fraction exponent here that we need to get rid of. And the procedure, which we have here in the note, is we want to solve for variables with exponents um, by first isolating the variable. Now, what we mean by that is, you know, like if I see here on number two, see how this is 3x to the 5 thirds plus 96? I first want to get rid of the plus 96 and get rid of the 3 and, and isolate this before I deal with the exponent. Um, and I think you would kind of assume that, that, you know, if we had something just as like 2x minus 1 equals 5, we would, we would add the 1, divide the 2, you know, we're getting the variable alone. And so that is still what's happening here. And, and then in the end, we'll end up with something like this, where we need to apply this second piece, which is applying the reciprocal exponent. Um, let, me, let me first go to an even more basic example than this to show you what's happening here. Now, something like x squared equals 25. Now, I don't think you need any tricky math here. You could probably do this in your head that you're kind of thinking, all right, what squared equals 25? And the answer is 5. It's actually 5 and negative 5. But what we could do is we could kind of do what we're seeing down here is apply the reciprocal exponent. And because what you would do in this case um, prior to this chapter is you, you would do the square root of both sides, right? Now, so doing the square root of both sides, but we know that we have an exponent that is equivalent to square root, right? The square root is the same thing as raising to the one half, we, if you remember from our fraction exponent chapter. So what you could do is you can get rid of this exponent here by raising both sides to the half because what you end up with here now is, is 2 times a half, and 2 times a half is 1. And we know x to the first is, is really just x. So um, by multiplying an exponent by its reciprocal, you end up uh, getting, I just want to fix that right over here. So 2 times 1 half is 1. So when you multiply a number by its reciprocal, it multiplies to 1. It's called the um, multiplicative identity property. You multiply something by its reciprocal, it's 1. You know, I give you a simple example, like if I want to turn 2 over 5 into 1, I multiply it by 5 over 2 because you'd end up with 10 over 10 and things can cross out, but any, anything times its reciprocal is 1. So if I want to get rid of an exponent, I multiply by its reciprocal, but I have to do that on both sides. So I raise both sides by an exponent of a half. And 25 to the 1 half is really the same thing we know as the square root of 25 is 5. Now, you don't need this for x squared because we know we could just do squared both sides, but you do for something like this. So x to the uh, 3 over second is my exponent. So I have a 3 over 2 exponent equals 8. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise both sides to the 2 thirds. I'm going to raise both sides by the reciprocal of my exponent. The reciprocal of 3 over 2 is 2 over 3. Now remember, reciprocal has nothing to do with changing signs. It's simply flipping a fraction upside down. And so what I end up with is 3 over 2 times 2 over 3 is x to the first, which is just x. And now I can simplify this over here. Um, this is, if you remember from fraction exponents, that your, your bottom number of the fraction exponent is your root number. So that's like saying the cubed root of 8, and that whole thing squared. And the cube's root of 8 is 2, and 2 squared is 4. So x equals 4. And of course, you can type into your calculator 8 raised to the 2 thirds. Just be careful with parentheses and things like that. Let me show you real quick. I mean, I know you've seen this before, but 8 raised to the parentheses 2 divided by 3 parentheses. The parentheses are helpful to to tell the calculator that that whole thing is an exponent, not just the first thing you type. And so you got, so you got x, x equals 4, and you can then check that in here by saying, all right, well, 4 raised to the 3 over 2, does that equal 8? And let's see. So my answer, raised to the parentheses 3 divided by 2, and that does indeed equal 8. All right, one more quick example, a short video today. 
Uh, so what the directions here were saying is you, you first need to isolate the variable uh, before you do the reciprocal, and that, that's what's happening here. So what I'm doing in this question where it's uh, 3x to the 5 thirds plus 96, I, I want to first uh, get the x to the 5 thirds alone. All right, so let me just grab a pen here. Sorry, my tablet's kind of jumping around. All right, let's let's go. So uh, first, like like just if it was three x plus ninety six equals zero, what would you do? You you would first you get rid of the plus or minus stuff first, right before we divide the three. So you're gonna minus ninety six to both sides, and that's gonna give you three x to the five thirds equals negative ninety six, and then you're gonna divide by the three. So divide both sides by three, and that's gonna give us x to the 5 thirds, and so I have successfully isolated my variable. And then what's negative 96 divided by 3, that would be negative 32. So negative 32. And now that I have simply a, a base, an exponent, an answer is one way to look at it. Uh, my base is x, my exponent's 5 thirds, and it equals negative 32. To get rid of this ugly exponent of 5 thirds attached to my variable, because I don't want x to the 5 thirds, I want x to the first. All right, I just want x. I'm going to multiply both sides, not uh, multiply both sides, I'm going to raise both sides by the reciprocal uh, 3 fifths. So raise this to the 3 fifths. And, you know, this is a little complex because you're doing the fifth root of negative 32. And it's okay that's negative, it's not going to be imaginary because it's an odd power root we're raising it to. Um, and that cube, so uh, maybe you don't know what the fifth root of negative 32 is. Well, you can use your calculator, of course. So we have, you know, it would be a good idea to maybe put your base in parentheses. So negative 32 raised, especially when your base is negative, those parentheses are, are very, very important, raised to the parentheses of 3 divided by 5. And so I have negative 32 raised to the 3 fifths, and the answer is negative 8. And I can I can check that by then plugging negative 8 in here and checking that out, see if that'll work. But the reason why it's worked out is, is the uh, the fifth root of negative 32, remember the bottom number is your, your root power, the fifth root of 32 is 2. Is 2 um, squared is 4, cubed is 8, to the fourth is 16, to the fifth is 32. And so um, to the fifth power would end up being negative 2, and then that thing, uh, cubed, negative 2 cubed is, is negative 8. That's why it works out. But your calculator can give you that information. All right, that's it.